So hello and welcome back to another coin video and in today's video we have a nice Fribbent coin. So this is the first Fribbent that Australia issued for circulation in 1910. But it was not the first coin issued, that was a shilling on March the 10th. This coin was issued later in the year when they were first shipped. So these were minted in London but they don't seem to have a mint mark on them. So no mint mark's pretty standard. Doesn't mean it's an error coin. Uh, just means that the London Mint didn't worry about minting uh, coins with mint marks because everyone knows where they come from. So this has the Australian coat of arms. On the right, or should I say, uh, on this side of the coin, we have an emu, which is a large bird that occurs all over Australia. Although a lot of places it's absent now because of uh, land clearing and uh, hunting. So probably inland Australia, you or forested areas you'll find them. I don't find them in forested areas of uh, Victoria though. And here we have a kangaroo. So this is a generic kangaroo. Uh, could be an eastern grey, could be a red kangaroo, could be a wallaroo or a euro. Uh, I don't think there's any designated species of kangaroo that this is. So here we have the coat of arms. So this is the first coat of arms. There's the southern cross and the shields around it that represent the states. So uh, we have Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland. Western Australia, South Australia, Tasmania. And we have the Federation Star. So this one has each point for each of the states and one point for any of the territories. Denomination, Frippens, and as you can see, uh, it's quite a nice coin. This is probably almost uncirculated. Some people class as EF. And as you can see, it has some ghosting on it. So that means that the effigy on the other side is... Uh, been uh, somewhat incorporated into the design on this side. So here we have the rim, as you can see, doesn't show too much wear. And here we have the effigy. And once again, you can see some ghosting on the sides there. So this is Edward the Eighth, the Gratia, and as you can see, there's not too much wear. This side. I would say this is probably EF condition based on the portrait itself. It shows a lot more wear than the, uh, the coat of arms side. So it looks like we also have a die crack going around this way. So that will make that an error coin. So if we just zoom in, we can see if that is true. So, yeah, maybe it looks like it. Looks like it does show some, a little bit of a grease strike where the metal's been pushed out to the side. So let's have a closer look at the effigy. So the mintage of this coin is 4 million. So it's not a rare coin, not a scarce coin. Uh, it's hard to get in a high grade like this, but you can find them. So the catalogue value in EF is $35, uh, almost uncirculated, $75. But you need to take those with a grain of salt. Actually, not a grain of salt, more like a table of salt. So uh, I would say is that the catalogue value is probably double what they actually sell for. So an EF, yeah, probably about $20. $30 in uncirculated catalog has 120 I would say probably about 60 70 something like that but the best place you can find uh, with values or sold values what people have actually sold for is eBay sold values but you also need to take into account is that some people do bid on their own items on the eBay and also uh, some people do that as well, make it or maybe buy their own items 
make it look like it's sold for that price and then cancel it later so that's what you need to be careful to take now ebay items with uh uh, yeah, grain of salt as well. So here we have it in comparison with uh, the next design, 1952. And as you can see, this one was minted in Melbourne. So true grey. So this is quite a nice coin. And if you compare the rims, yeah, I've got no problem with that. When I first got this coin, I thought it might have been a fake. Uh, it only cost me about ten dollars purchase from the united kingdom so that's what you also need to um think about where the coin is coming from some other countries you know these coins might not be as valuable as what they are in australia so anyway that's quite a nice fragrance coin now, i do like this one as well so let me know what you think about this australian coin from 1910 if you have it in your collection and whether you think this is worth grading i reckon because it's under a hundred dollars no thank you and goodbye